45 minutes, and some of the first ones are really long, like an hour long for the ones on spreads, dribbles, and riffles, but really show you how those principles jack into the system that we've been talking about tonight. Because there, I tried to talk in several places about how just spreading the cards can actually make or break the effect. Because how often do we really, here, well, you know, we learn the move, we learn the principle, and then we think, well, I'll spread the cards how I spread them. But at the end of the day, when you start really trying to create magic as pictures, you start realizing that every little thing has a place in that picture. And so I tried to build them one at a time. And they go from card controls and handling and then reverses. And then they go into basic switches. And then it, you know, then we get into the double lifts and turnovers. And then it goes from there into passes and palms and the advanced systems. And I know, realistically, you're going to be dealing with that stuff for a while. It's meant to be very, very dense and meaty. But I would rather you get a chance to see like I say, the whole picture before you start deciding. Because otherwise, what happens? You see a second deal, you start learning the second deal. You might decide next year, oh, poo, I didn't want a second deal. I wanted a bottom deal. And then next year, oh, poo, I didn't need a bottom deal. What I needed was a top change. And so this just sort of lets it all get in the cooker and you get to start working with it. Plus, for a lot of people who want to hear a lot of in-depth stuff on the passes and things, that's, that's a good opportunity. Go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Like we can we can do it here. We can show it here, and you can rewatch it. Um, but if you really want to get in depth on any of this work, and uh, you know all of the work that you're going to be sharing with them, that's definitely the place to go. Yeah, and you know another thing that we're doing over there, if anyone's interested, is you can go on to my coaching site, and you can sign up for like my next free public class where you get to meet me and we get to teach some magic and talk about it. And so, you know, we're really doing all kinds of group lessons now and group, you know, small groups and all kinds of stuff. So it's kind of really exciting because it's getting really personal and I'm, I'm really enjoying it because for a long time I've done DVDs and I'm loving just getting to actually see people get it, which is what I really like, mm -hmm. you know. And even when I'm not doing enough tricks, it's because I know that there's some people that really want to get that thing that I'm trying to put into it over and above that. And, and I feel like I owe responsibility to that person as well. All right, well, let's wrap this thing up with uh, like three uh, major questions that, that should help anybody. What, what is the one thing that all magicians should improve? In your opinion, what should they improve? Their intention, their intention. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Juan Tamari says it in the front of all his books that the idea of this whole thing of magic is love. And that was always the answer when we were talking about stage fright with him as well. He said, you know, when I get scared backstage, I think to myself, I'm trying to give these people something beautiful, I'm trying to give these people some love. And if I fail in the act of trying to give them that, that's a pretty nice way to fail. And that takes all the pressure off of yourself. And so I think our attitude and just recognizing that that's what we're trying to do takes a lot of the heat off of us. You know, because when I was doing this, when we first met, I was trying to get love by doing magic. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a big shift in there when I realized, no, not really. Just trying to give it. And it really does take a lot of heat off of you. And it allows you to go easier on yourself when they're not going your way, easier on yourself when you had a great show, just it starts to really lube the process a lot better to not even confuse yourself with what you're trying to do with your magic. Just love the people, you know? Keep it simple. And what do you think, uh, what are your criteria for a good trick? What do you think makes a good trick? Clear, direct, <coughs> not too much process, and it's got to work for you. And, and that's, how do you know that? Well. You try everything until you start to get the message. Yeah. Something will click, right? Eventually you start to go, eh, you know, some kind of tricks work with me better than others. And some, mm, not so much. Yeah. You can feel, you know, you got to do a lot of magic. There's a lot of magic in between not knowing that and knowing that. Yeah. And you got to just do it all. You know, Billy McComb used to, you know, you talk to a fellow like Bill McComb, there was no trick you could mention that Billy McComb hadn't done. Yeah. Thousands and thousands of methods of thousands and thousands of tricks. And as a kid, I used to think, whoa, how do you have time to do all those tricks all the time? Well, you probably didn't do all those tricks all the time. You probably did a lot of those tricks three to four times. And went, <laughs> right? And so that gave him a remarkable depth of awareness about what kind of material he liked to do. But that's how he figured it out. He did everything until he started to know. Mm -hmm. 
And, last question. Uh, last question. Yeah, let's do let's do like, uh, one one last question for you. And uh, gosh, I, I'm not sure which one of these I would actually like to ask. Oh no! Do I get to pick? Yeah, you want to pick? Uh, you want to pick it? Oh, you you, know, I, I you can call them out loud. I'm not yeah, picking. Your, uh, your your thoughts on uh, mentalism versus magic, or how you feel about overt skill, which we talked about that just yeah, so skip that. before, so skip that. Mentalism versus magic, that's kind of a negative. I'll say on, something right? about, no, you know what, I'll say one thing about let's, mentalism. Let's hear, let's hear what you Because mentalism is completely the same exact topic as the love thing. Yeah. And I do think that a lot of us want magic people to see, think magic is as cool as we think it is. And we all know that that can be a real challenge. That's up to each and every one of us to win that battle every day. Um, and you know, sometimes, Sometimes we're winning and sometimes we're losing. You know what I mean? Uh, depending on how we're doing and how the crowd is and all kinds of stuff. But I just feel like mentalism is so, it so naturally draws us because it's got that glint of real reality to it. If we play it right, we can, you know, maybe you'll go for it. And if you really go for it, well then, you'll see I'm special. And there's an element of, of that that really comes up. And I just, you know, I, I go back to watching Ron Tamaris on stage in, in Spain. Um, and you know, I don't remember what the trick was, but the effect that I had was that a purple imaginary dinosaur walked onto stage and put a thought of card in his pocket, in Juan's pocket, and then the thought of card was in his pocket. But the effect in my mind was that a purple spotted flying dinosaur like Matt King in the Cloak of Invisibility, yeah, right, right. and he came on stage, you know, and pulled a thought of card out of his pocket. Now, that's not mentalism, but it's so courageous to love his audience and say, you know what, I'm going to paint this picture, this whimsical, imaginative, loving, silly, amazing picture, and I'm going to give it to you, and it's going to just blow your mind. And so all I would say is mentalism can be great and it can be wonderful and I've done an awful lot of it. An awful lot of it. Um, I just think it's important to remember, you know, you can, you, it's, to me the effect isn't necessarily about power. It can be about imagination and love and sometimes you can open up the audience even more that way. And, and it's for each of you to discover, and each of you is going to have a chance to work in all of these different forms. So I feel like, you know, so someone once said to me, mentalism is a, is, a, is a really great phase for everybody. And for some people, it's a lifetime. But for all of us, everything's a phase until it's not. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's just something to think about when you're working through your close-up magic that, you know, power's something, but it's not everything. That's a beautiful thought. But do you have any other closing thoughts? I don't have any closing thoughts. I just want to thank everybody for coming and spending all this time talking about all this stuff. I know it's uh, pretty esoteric, the kind of magic that we're talking about. It certainly goes far afield, and we go deep into it. And um, you know, if, you, if you've been really sticking it out, and you're watching these lectures, and you're really doing it, you're getting a real apprenticeship in the art of magic and you're really getting to see exactly what's going on all over the place. So the best thing I can say is test it all for yourself. Don't believe anything that you heard from anybody, including myself, especially myself. Go let the audience tell you and if you open your heart and listen to what they're telling you, that's going to lead you exactly where you're supposed to go. And that's it. Let's give Aaron a big round of applause. Thanks for joining us. Always great to hang out with you. And uh, thank you so much for supporting Live Magic.